What's going on everyone, Boone here from Shutterstock. Today I want to talk to you about working with photographs in Adobe Premiere Pro. And the reason I want to talk to you about this is because working with photos is a little bit different than working with your standard video clips. And it's important to know a few tips and tricks to make things easier on yourself. Let's get started. One of the most common issues you'll run into when working with photographs in Adobe Premiere Pro is the fact that your photographs are a different size from your sequence. So if you look at my sequence here, you can see that it's high definition, 1920 by 1080, but my photograph that I'm working with is much larger. I'm working with a 4500 by just over 3000 pixel image. So now watch what happens when I bring this photograph into my sequence. It's gonna automatically default to its original size, so it's quite large here. Looks like it's scaled up, but that's its original size. So to really visualize that, I'm gonna scale this view down to 25%, and then we'll take a look at the bounding box area of our photograph. These are the edges. Now, if I wanted to get this to fit to our screen, I could scale it down like this, or I could go to the Effect Controls panel and scale it down here with the Scale property, but there's a much better way. So I'm gonna go ahead and Command-Z, undo this. All I need to do is grab my clip down here, go to Clip, Video Options, and then I'll hit Set to Frame Size. Now watch the program monitor here. Now that automatically scales that down to fit within our frame size. I'm going to change this back to, to have our display fit here. Now let's say we're working with a large number of photographs. We don't want to have to do this scale every time or do this action every time. So I can change the actual default preferences by going to Preferences Media and then setting the default media scaling to set to frame size. And there you go. There's another default setting that Premiere has for still images, and that is the duration. If you look here, this still image clip is five seconds in length. Now this is the automatic default that Premiere will have for the durations of still image files. Now let's say we're working on a slideshow and we wanna have these photos up for 10 seconds at least. This could be a bit of a pain as we're dropping all of our photos in here and dragging these out to 10 seconds in length. To avoid that, we can simply go into the preferences again and change that default. This time, I'm gonna go down to timeline. And if you look here, there's a still image default duration. Right now, it's at the five seconds. I can just change that to 10. This next trick is kind of super technical, but it's important to know because you might encounter this error. Now let's say I got sent an image by someone and I go to take this image they wanted in the project. So I go to drag it in and I get this error message that says the video bit depth of this file is unsupported. Now you might encounter this sometimes with certain images that have a certain color space. Now this color space is called CMYK and this is the print friendly color workspace. Now this does not jive with video because video is RGB color space. So to solve this problem, I can go over to the photo and open it up in Photoshop and then simply change that color space. So here's my image. I can go up to image, mode, and you look down here, it says CMYK color. I can simply switch that to RGB save this file out and now when I go back to Premiere and I go to re-import this photo it should import just fine. One of the coolest things about bringing photographs into Premiere Pro is the fact that you can bring them to life with keyframes and movements. You can actually simulate camera movements by keyframing position, scale, or rotation properties. First I'll open up the effect controls panel. If you can't see it just go to window effect controls and now this gives me all of my properties for my clip here. So now if I simply add a position and scale keyframes and put that at the end, and then I can change these and scale it up to 100. Now we're gonna kind of simulate this movement. It's gonna be all the way zoomed in here. And it's really as simple as putting beginning and end keyframes for each property that you want to animate and then just adding a little bit of ease here. And now you can see by adding these keyframes, and now I have some movement on my photograph. I don't even have to zoom it all the way out like that. I can keep it to right here. And just like that, in a few seconds, I've brought a little bit of movement into this photograph. For my final tip, I want to talk about bringing Photoshop files into Premiere Pro. Now I already did a full-blown article and video tutorial on this, and I will link to that in this article, but I just could not leave this tip out of this article because this is one thing that you really need to be aware of if you're working with photos in Premiere Pro. 
So I'm going to go over here to my finder and I have a Photoshop file here which consists of two simple layers. It has a text layer and then it has my image layer. So now watch what happens when I bring this into Premiere Pro. Premiere is going to give me a little dialog box and it's going to allow me to really control what I do with these layers. And this is the beauty of working with two Adobe programs is that they obviously are going to work really well together. So you see here I have four different options. I can merge all the layers. I can merge individual layers together that I specify. I can import just all the individual layers of the Photoshop file or I can import the individual layers within a sequence. So again, this is a lot of options here and I go into these in great detail in my other tutorial. So be sure to check that out next. So I'll select sequence, click OK. And now we have all the assets in the little folder of our Photoshop file. Very cool. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you next time.